Hello, with this video I'm going to explain how to make a um, crash proof foam 3D plane. I've had this one for about four years and it's been in multiple crashes and the only structural damage it's ever had is that the fuselage broke and I put a couple popsicle sticks to fix it. Otherwise, uh, the only thing that happens is I tend to break a lot of props, probably about ten of them. And this uses laminated foam, which is much stronger than the unlaminated stuff. And um, I've got a foam buffer in back of the engine, so if the plane hits, it'll bend, and if it really hits hard, it'll break these plastic zip ties, but it doesn't cause structural damage to the plane. In addition, I've got a 3 millimeter carbon fiber tube here, and another one here. I also um, put this packing tape with the fibers in it, and ran that along the fuselage, which greatly increases the strength of the fuselage. Um, probably the most important thing is I use this dense foam to absorb the um, crashes when I'm crashing the plane with um, in inverted loops or um, outside loops uh, is tends to be the most violent crashes. And then I'm, the rest of the video I'm going to explain how to make this plane. It only has uh, nine pieces of plastic. This is the uh, horizontal part of the fuselage. It is nine inches wide here. It is or 23 centimeters wide. It is 57 centimeters or 22.4 inches long. Um, this width over here is 4 inches or 10 centimeters. And uh, this width is 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches. And here's a hole cut for the servo. And this line indicates the center of the, the piece. Here's the wings and ailerons. The wings are 30 inches or 76 centimeters long and they're 17.5 centimeters wide. The ailerons are 6.5 centimeters uh, wide. And here's a notch for the fuselage and a hole for the servo. And I also, um, to add a bit of design, put an angle at, at the corners of the wing. These are the remaining pieces of the aircraft. This is the top part of the fuselage, the bottom part of the fuselage, with a notch for the wing and a notch for the servos. And this is 60 centimeters or 23 and a half inches long. The bottom piece is 6 centimeters wide. The top piece is 7.7 .7 centimeters here and 5.4 centimeters here. And here's a notch where the elevator will fit. This is the elevator and uh, this is 11 centimeters in this dimension and 36 centimeters in this dimension. And this cutout here um, is for where the plane fuselage fits. It's 23 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And a notch here, 9 centimeters by 5 centimeters for the rudder. And again, I cut off the corners of the elevator. And finally, the rudder is 11 centimeters by 20.5 centimeters. And here's a notch here for the um, elevator so it doesn't interfere with the rudder. And this demonstrates the notch for the rudder to move and the notch in the fuselage for the elevator to move. Placement of the servos to control the rudder and elevator and placement of the servo to control the ailerons. The hinges on the plane are formed by putting the two pieces together with clear um, packing tape. And you should have the two pieces at a bit of an angle so that they can articulate and the bottom aspects of the foam won't hit each other. Here's a tape forming the hinge and a bit of a V so that um, it has full range of motion. I also painted um, orange stripes on the bottom to help orient the, uh, the plane right side up when flying it. The whole thing was uh, assembled with um, low temperature hot glue. If you use the high temperature stuff it'll melt the foam so you want to use low temperature hot glue. The landing gear was formed by bending a hanger, pushing it through two holes here, and tying it together here. And this is just so that the um, propeller doesn't hit when the plane lands. So the good things about this plane, it's essentially crash proof. I've tried to destroy it in crashes, but I've been unsuccessful. And it's very simple to build, only having um, eight pieces of foam. And the body, wings, tail, and elevator are basically uh, variations of rectangles, so it's easy uh, to put together.